The most expensive Indian is here. It is the biggest, meanest and most intimidating motorcycle ever made. Or is it? Not really. It looks very intimidating, let's just start with that. What you ask? Well, the massive red hulk of a motorcycle here, of course, what else? It goes by the name of Indian Roadmaster and happens to be the latest and the biggest Indian motorcycle to date, also, probably the heaviest. Just a look at this behemoth is enough to send a shiver of intimidation down your spine. At almost 9 feet long, over a meter wide and weighing in at 421 kilograms dry, the Roadmaster is not to be taken lightly, pun not intended, or so you would think. But despite its massive size it looks rather approachable, and of course exquisite. It is what Americans like to call a full dresser, just like the Harley Davidson Electroglide. The Roadmaster is based on the Chieftain which means you get the massive front fairing with a headlamp that complements the size of the motorcycle perfectly, just like the Chieftain. The one we got was finished in a scarlet and off-white hue, the true Indian colors, and that scheme makes it simply astonishing to look at. Aesthetically, it is the perfect embodiment of the Chiefs from the 50s if they were built for 2016. The front fender almost covers the whole front wheel and tapers off at the end in true retro Indian style. Oh and did we mention the illuminated war bonnet on the front fender? The design flows flawlessly thanks to the flowing design of the tank and the hard panniers on either side which mimic the design of the rear fender and taper off along with it. And then there's the attention to detail. The engine looks like it took about three cans of chrome to paint and still doesn't look overdone. The grips have grooves in them so your gloved hands don't slip. The wide rider's seat and the armchair-esque pillion perch are all finished in leather. Goes without saying, fit finish levels are impeccable and the bike feels well built and solid. Also, the Indian logo is everywhere. And I mean everywhere. We tried to determine how many times does the logo appear on the bike, we found 50 of them but as it turned out we were 8 short of the correct number according to the Indian guy, pun intended. Now before we swung our leg over the behemoth, we were informed that the bike weighs about 421 kilograms, dry and that we should be careful with it. Surprisingly though, the moment you swing a leg over the bike your legs tends to snag in the armrest bars. Yes, armrests on a motorcycle. They are for the pillion only though. Let's try again, swing your leg over the bike and when you sit on the exceptionally wide and comfortable leather perch, it feels like you are sitting in the bike rather than on it. The meter wide highway handlebars feel comfortable and the wide and exquisite rider seat feels even more so. The clocks are a similar sight albeit with a key difference of a 200 watts audio system which is also Bluetooth compatible. The switch gear is placed on crumbed out consoles the size of landline telephones placed on either side of the handlebars. Also, picking the bike off its stand is surprisingly easy. You would think that only Sylvester Stallone can do it but you would be wrong. Even Michael Cyra will have little trouble getting the bike to run. And you don't need a key to get going. Well. You need the fob in your pocket but you don't need the actual key thanks to the keyless start and to switch the ignition on all you need to do is press the power button on the tank. Switch the bike on and it wakes up with an extremely refined and relaxed V-twin rumble. Where the engine on a Harley feels raw and gruff the Thunderstroke 111 feels like it has been built by scientists with white lab coats and not engineers with grease in their fingernails. It idles like a purring kitten that has the power to punch through walls. Slots the gear lever into first and the gear slams home like a well-oiled jackhammer with a prominent thud. The moment you stop being stationary, at least a couple of quintals of the bike's weight disappear almost instantaneously. It is hard to imagine how a motorcycle with this much mass, this much real estate and an 1800cc V-twin could be this easy to manage. The torque delivery is smoother than a baby's bottom and there is ample torque available no matter where you are in the rev range. The gear shifts do require a bit of effort but you will never miss a gear or find false neutrals. 
the seat is as comfortable as comfortable can be and this relaxed demeanor is only enhanced by their massive footrests. All of this combined creates a riding experience like no other motorcycle. Especially on wide open roads it feels like you're sitting in an armchair even though it's the pillion who actually is. According to our photographer the pillion seat is akin to sitting in an S-class albeit on two wheels and exposed to the elements. The ride too is very forgiving and almost pliant, pliant.